Hey there, and welcome to the Uke Stuff channel, and welcome to this full Uke Guide review of the Koakalani Long Neck Soprano. It's their solid acacia model. And in case you don't watch any part of the rest of this video, this, this is amazing. I, I don't know how they do it, and it is a complete pleasure to bring this to your attention today. Now, before I go any further, let me just say that you will see on the bottom of your screen there are chapters that you can slide forward to parts of this video that matter to you. These are rather long-winded. I'm okay with that because you can skip ahead to what you want to see. If you want to see a list of what those are, those appear in the description as well. Now, just to kind of fill you in on the story of this instrument, I was on Facebook. Someone had said that they had purchased a solid koa instrument for like $150. And of course, I went to look to see what was going on. And it wasn't solid koa. It was solid acacia koa, which is used in the industry. Um, it does confuse some buyers, but it is what it is as well. Acacia koa, and koa is a brand of acacia. And you can say something is acacia koa. But koa is koa. Koa is a wood that only grows in Hawaii. It's a sub-branch of the acacia line. And because of the climate in Hawaii, uh, koa has special properties that normally acacia doesn't. And I, now, at this point, now own a number of acacia instruments. Not just, I own a couple koa, but in particular, I have a lot of acacia instruments. And they tend to be a little bit darker and they tend to uh, not bring out the high end as much as koa. Something happens in the climate of Hawaii with koa that changes that acacia's formulation, and it sounds different. So even if you plant that same tree in another part of the world, it just doesn't end up growing the same. It's kind of weird, but that's the reality of it. And that's why koa is such a prized wood. And in fact, uh, I believe that you can only harvest koa from a fallen tree. Now, there are companies such as Kanalea that are planting forests of koa because they realize that there's a sustainable industry there for the future. So if you want wood for ukuleles and other things down the road that are made of koa, you got to make sure that the koa is there for the future. Now, with that all said, um, this company is in Hawaii, Koa Kalane, and that's where they're located. And I've had a chance to visit with them online a number of times. But my first reaction was to contact the company directly and say, hey, I just found out about your company. Would you be interested in having me review some of your instruments or any of your instruments? And they got back and they said, yeah, we'll send you a couple uh, with one expectation, which is that you donate one of them to one of your students. Because I explained I'm a music educator, but I do this channel. And I gotta admit, that does get to your heart a little bit. So I'm very excited. I have not seen my fifth graders yet. My fifth graders do ukulele. And when I see them, I get to tell them that I have an ukulele that I get to give away to one of them. Um, it's a long story, but this is 2020. We're teaching in a hybrid mode. And right now I teach a grade level for two weeks. And in the rotation, I don't see fifth grade until um, November. So with that in mind, um, I'm looking forward to that, and I'm actually going to be donating the Solid Top Concert, which I've reviewed on this channel separately, um, to one of my students with two things in mind. First of all, it's going to be easier for them to take care of, and second, I can find a standard case easy enough that I'm going to donate with that ukulele to a student as well as humidifiers to help them uh, take care of it. Because we do live in the Minnesota slash Wisconsin area, where the humidity is so low inside sometimes that it's lower than the Sahara Desert. Now, with that all said, I found out a lot about the company. I've read a lot online. There's been a couple of seemingly nightmare stories. And what I can tell you is that in each one of those nightmare stories, it doesn't sound like the buyer reached out to Koa Kalani at all. There was no statement of, um, I wrote Koa Kalani and they wouldn't help me. That was not there at all. So it sounds like every time this happened, they just kind of threw up their hands. So for example, the most uh, prevalent story, it appears in the Ukulele Underground forums and then elsewhere on this person's blog. So it's out there a few times. This person recounts how they found the Koa Kalanis being sold at a Kmart. I think the Hilo uh, Kmart in Hawaii. And they were just in a glass case and they bought one, couldn't believe the price, brought it home, 
and then found out that the whack neck warped or something on them and then just chalked it up as a lost instrument instead of reaching out to Kola Kalani. Um, on their website, Kola Kalani guarantees customer satisfaction and um, they didn't get a chance to do that. So with that said, um, one of the things I've been watching, now I've had these for a while and I purposely spread out these ukuleles so that I wouldn't review them right after the other, but I'm watching the next, just trying to see if anything's gonna happen. And we are in a climate shift now, it's October, uh, here in Minnesota, Wisconsin, so humidity is going like this. So the neck has had plenty of opportunity to start messing around. It's fine. So I'm not too worried about this. The review that I give to you today, I feel pretty confident in. And um, again, lovely people to work with. Actually, that's true of a lot of the ukulele industry. Usually smaller companies, family run, uh, nice people. And everybody else that I hear from lately that has bought one of these has been rather pleased. So um, that's kind of the backstory. Um, by the way, they're no longer for sale in that Kmart in Hilo because that Kmart is closed. It closed in 2018. So I'm not sure if you can buy these in Hawaii right now, but you can certainly get them on their website at www.koakalani.com. So there is so much to say about this instrument. I'm just going to get going with it. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at subjective issues about the instrument, things that are just my opinion. Then we're going to look at objective data. What is the facts about it? What are the uh, specifications of the instrument? And then I'll come back with, again, a subjective uh, summary as well as a rating that I give on these instruments. And I might even talk a little bit about a couple other long necks that I have at that point that are not the Koa Kalani. So let's get going. This thing costs $113 plus $35 shipping. And that makes a total of $148. Now, if you flip out at the $35 shipping, I want to let you know that I had to ship an ukulele to Hawaii. I had to ship uh, my solid Koa Koaloha concert back to Koaloha to get repaired under their better than the weather warranty and it cost me about $35 to ship it. So that's real cost, shipping US Postal Service, which is how Koa Kalani sent these to me. So I'm not upset by that, and that price together is lower than the price of one of Kala's solid top laminate instruments. So just to put that in comparison, the incredible bargain here. So the cost is really super affordable in terms of value that also makes it right out the roof. I'm not sure you can find another solid ukulele of this quality at that price anywhere. It's sort of like the amazing deal of the century. So you do get a gig bag. It's a lighter gig bag. Because it's a solid wood instrument, I would suggest the purchase of a case with it. So you're gonna to need to factor that into the price. And um, if you live in a climate like I do, where the relative humidity drops below 40%, during, in my case, eight months of the year, then in that case, you're also gonna to wanna to keep a humidifier in it, especially knowing that it's solid wood. So just keep that in mind. So the value, off the charts. The build quality is a um, kind of a mixed thing, and it's not a negative, but I'm just gonna tell you. On the outside, it is gorgeous. It is, it's gorgeous. There are a couple sharp fret ends. Doesn't really bother me very much. Um, but the neck is one piece of wood. There's no scarf joint. It is all one piece. And you can tell because the grain runs right through the entire thing. That's amazing. That's amazing. Um, the neck is unbelievably well designed. That comes to playability later, but what a comfortable neck. Um, it uses acacia for the fretboard and acacia for the bridge. And the acacia itself is stunning. I mean, it shimmers and it, can you see the shift in the patterns with it? And I have Koaloha acacia instruments. I have some other acacia instruments. Um, my, my Flight Spirit um, has a very similar sort of uh, flamey acacia, although that's more high gloss. 
Um, it's just, it's gorgeous. It's, it's gorgeous. It's so incredibly nicely built on the outside and comfortable to hold. Um, really impressed. Now, what's the negative? The negative's on the inside a little bit. So one of the things I do is I take a look on the inside of what's happening with the instruments. So let's go do that and take a look on the inside. All right, let's take a look on the inside of the Koa Kalani Solid Acacia Long Neck Soprano Ukulele. All right, as we go into it here, you can see the joint where the two halves meet. They're supported down the middle with that brace there. There's the brace on the bottom. And then this is where it gets interesting. You can see where the measurements were written for this model and you can see that they were matched together. So 524, all the pieces uh, go together. A lot of glue, as you can see, some glue stain on the side. And of course, most people are never going to stick a camera on the inside of their ukulele, but you can kind of see what's going on here. The bridge plate does not extend to the full sides. And you just have one functional support running up the middle of the ukulele. So that's pretty much what we're taking a look at in the lower bout of the instrument. Let's take a look at the upper bout. All right, now taking a look at the instrument on the inside. Just some more glue mess. And there's our support across the top and some extra glue. And you can see the, the line that was drawn. And that's it, and you can see the solid acacia on the bottom and on the sides. All right, and that's our look at the Koa Kalani Solid Acacia Long Neck Soprano Ukulele. Okay, so we're back. So you can see there's some glue mess on the inside. Now, you'll never really see it as you look on the inside, and that probably won't bother you, but just so you know, it, it could be cleaner on the inside. Now I'm gonna show you one other thing that I don't think is build quality. I'll tell you what I think it is. I don't know if I'll be able to get it in the light. In fact, I can. I have some scratches on the back of mine that came that way. Now, what I think that was, was a price tag. And perhaps this was a model that at one point was on a sales floor at Kmart or something. I don't know. It doesn't bother me for two reasons. First of all, this was sent to me for review and it did not cost me anything. So um, I have a hard time being critical about that. If I bought it, that might bother me a little more, but I would certainly try some kind of polish first to see if I could get that those scratches out of the back. So I'm not so much as worried about that as I could be, but just keep that in mind. I doubt yours will have, and yeah, you can see them in the light right there, the real light scratches on the back. But while you do that, Look at that amazing, uh, it just, the acacia is amazing on this thing. It just, it's just gorgeous. So now let's talk appearance. Well, it's plain, but you do get the turtles that are an inlay. You can see it, the abalone inlay. There's no rosette and you get the Koa Kalane logo on the top. Now, without being too critical, there are some people online that have talked about the fact that they think that that's too close to Kamaka's logo, but it's not Kamaka's logo, although some people might be fooled into thinking that it is. And if that's the case, they should know better. That logo also appears on the inside, as you saw with the interior camera, but maybe you can see with the light, ring light, in the quite the right direction there. But otherwise, I mean, it's 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 beautiful. It's a beautiful instrument but it's plain so um, it does have again the inlays which kind of spruce it up a little bit and of course just the the beauty of that wood in and of itself is gorgeous but it is plain now in terms of availability as far as i know these are still available at koakalani.com they did mention that most of their current stock i read this elsewhere on their website and this is in october 2020 um predated COVID. And of course, as we know, there are supply issues with COVID. So if they sell out, it might be a little while before they can restock. So just do keep that in mind. Now, in terms of playability, it's a little bit smaller than 35 millimeter nut, but the spacing is pretty much the same 
as every 35 millimeter nut that I ever, uh, or instrument that I play with a 35 millimeter nut. However, um, the setup is quite good on this one. No complaints. 0.5 millimeters at the first fret, uh, 2.5 millimeters at the 12th. But this neck is incredible. I don't know if you can see how flat that shape is, but it's so wonderful to play. It's just so comfortable. And it makes it seem wider than it is and more playable um, than the 35 millimeter nut that it is. So really, in terms of playability, if you have giant hands, you may not like it as much because of the 35 millimeter nut, but man, that is so nice. That's that's amazing. And it was also the same type of neck on the solid top concert that I was sent to review. Now, in terms of sound quality, I think it's great. I think it has the sound of a solid wood soprano ukulele. It has kind of that, that bark, that bite. There's really good sustain, which is what you'd expect from a solid instrument. It, um, it sounds brighter than a lot of the acacia instruments that I have. Now, it is not as loud as a koaloha, but nothing else really is. Something about koalohas are, you know, louder than all other things, but it has a, a really thin, and not super thin, but I mean, it has a very thin soundboard that's very resonant. And it'd be interesting to, to hear a tenor or a concert um, with the same construction as a solid acacia instrument, which by the way, they're all within like $30 of each other. So if you're interested in a concert or a tenor, I mean, seriously, it's, it's definitely something to look at and we'll come back to that. So, um, it's loud enough. It's not as loud as a colo, huh? And the tone is towards bright. It's, it's really a winner. Now, what I will say is the strings sort of look like Aquila Super Nile Guts, and I cannot wait until this review is over so I can put on Worth fluorocarbon strings. And I also got these for my Koloha long neck Opio instrument. And there's a comparison coming between this and the Koloha Opio after I get a chance to review it so you can see how much of a, what I think is, is a, a steal this instrument really is. It's not a steal. I mean, you're buying it at the price, but it's... It's really quite an amazing bargain. Okay, one of the things I like to do is I like to use the app Tonal Energy Tuner, which takes a look at what's happening across the sound spectrum, not only with the original um, instant of the chord, where you see the entire spectrum light up, but also with the sustain. And it lets you see what's happening as much as you hear me talk about it. So with that, what I do is I generally play one of the most open chords, C chord on a GCA ukulele, and I let you see. So let's do that. Here we go. So I just stopped it from ringing. Do you see how much is sustaining with that instrument and the frequencies that are sustaining? It is unbelievable. I mean, it's what you would expect and hope for from a solid wood ukulele, but you wouldn't even expect to get into that at the price at $150. So it, it's, it's amazing. Now that we've talked about the subjective issues, let's talk about the objective issues of the instrument or the specifications. All right, it is a concert scale instrument on a soprano body. That's important to note. Yes, they do have concerts. Yes, they do have tenors. I do not think they have baritones. And they also have a soprano pineapple that I'm going to be buying, um, just so you know. I, that's how much I'm impressed with what they're doing. The scale length is 15.375 inches from nut to saddle, which is a little bit longer than some other concerts. It has 17 frets, 14 to the body, and there is one side position marker. I don't own a Kamaka yet. That's one of my longer term goals. I wanna buy it in Hawaii. That's, that's what I wanna do. And I believe that Kamaka has one dot on the side. The body style is a double bout, right? 
and the soundboard is solid acacia as are the back and sides and it's just gorgeous solid acacia you have an acacia solid acacia fretboard you have a solid acacia bridge it is a slotted bridge which i think will be a benefit to some players it does not have a radius fretboard and you really don't need it with the shape of that neck the nut and saddle are bone i think they say it's ox bone it is not a compensated saddle it's sort of a thicker version of what you'd see on a koloha sort of saddle the finish is a satin finish the overall length is 22.75 inches. Now you might say, why isn't it 24? Because you're dealing with a concert scale neck on a soprano body, makes it a little shorter. Weighs one pound, 2.2 ounces. So again, nice and light, nice and balanced as you'd expect. The tuners are open geared tuners. Now, little side note here. Um, I love my Kolohas, there's no question about it. I think I have four or five or six Koloha products in my possession and don't worry i i get them used most of the time at a substantial savings but that said one of the negatives of a koloha is that they come with in fact i'll show you they come with friction tuners now there's nothing wrong with the friction tuner but they are a, sometimes a little bit harder to deal with i think for a lot of people looking at a first solid wood instrument or a step up instrument so let's say you bought like a flight TUS or a flight TUSL model as your first instrument. Great. And you can keep playing that as a travel instrument. Perfect. But what if you want to step up, but you don't want to spend $450, $500 on a solid instrument, and you kind of want to skip the laminates in between? Well, here's a $150 instrument that's solid acacia, but you don't have to worry about the friction tuners because you still have the geared chrome open geared tuners there that actually can be a benefit so just something to keep in mind now the action is really well set up here i mentioned that before in playability 0.5 millimeters at the first fret 2.5 millimeters at the 12th fret no complaints there the width of the nut is 34.23 millimeters that's really uh, on the smaller side, it's more towards 34 than 35. And again, there's kind of a push right now from a number of uh, reviewers and so forth that they want to see 38 millimeter nuts on everything. Well, 35 is the standard, so it's under that. However, the string spacing is equal or greater than a lot of the 35 millimeter nuts. So what that means is that they've just put the, they've just spread out the strings a little more, so you're probably a little closer to the side of the fretboard. Not a problem for me. So the space between strings at the first fret, that's just where I measure it, is 8.99 millimeters, which is almost 9 millimeters. That's a touch wider than a lot of 35 millimeter nuts. And at G to A, from G to A at the first fret, it's 29.51 millimeters. Okay, pretty standard. Maybe just a touch wider when you get there. Now, here's where it really makes a difference. I also checked the depth of the neck at the third fret. It's 18.39 millimeters from the top of the strings to the bottom of the neck at the third fret. That is really, really quite a reduction from what you normally see in the C-shaped neck. This is not your traditional C-shaped import neck. So that is quite amazing, and it's one of the things that makes this sort of a unique instrument and definitely worth looking at now with all those things said let's summarize what you've got here a lot of people are looking for a really good deal when it comes to ukulele i know i do i mean that's part of the deal i will shop um, the warehouse deals on amazon i'll be taking a look at things online um, i'll look at online listings for used instruments because i'm interested in getting nice instruments at a low cost. Well, what if I told you that you could buy a solid Acacia instrument that sounds great, plays well, but it's cheaper than many Kala laminates. And using Kala as an example because they're everywhere. I think you might say, oh, okay, is that for real? Well, it is for real. I'm holding it in my hands and you can too. Um, maybe it's not your only high quality ukulele. Maybe it's your first, 
But I have a feeling that a lot of people would be very, very happy and very, very lucky to own this. And the really cool part is you can buy this and still, if, if, instead of buying a $600 ukulele or something like that, you can buy this and then buy some other ukuleles without residual guilt. I mean, if you're an ukulele player, you're going to have more than one. There's very few ukulele players that own one instrument. So you could have your first instrument. Most of us hold on to those. They're, they become nostalgic to us, even if they're not great instruments. You could have your second instrument, and then maybe you have this one, and then maybe you move up the chain. But I have a sneaky suspicion that if you buy one of these, it's going to stay a part of your collection. Is it perfect? The answer is no, it's not perfect. First of all, I don't think there is an ukulele out there that is perfect. In fact, Joe Souza with Kanalea again mentioned that they keep trying to build perfection and they keep tweaking because they haven't found it. Pops at Koloha keeps tweaking because he hasn't found it. Um, if you take a look on the inside, yeah, there's some glue mess in there. Okay. Um, there were some sharp fret ends here. Uh, on this one, again, as I mentioned, there's some scratches on the back there that, again, I haven't tried to polish out yet. And, of course, when you buy one of these, you're probably going to want to buy a actual case rather than use the gig bag. Although, keep the gig bag because you can always then travel with it lightly. And you're probably going to want a humidifier. And you may want to try different strings. Those are pretty minimal complaints on an instrument. So, with all sincerity, this thing is worth every cent you pay for it times a lot more. Now, hopefully they don't go up in price with that, but what I'm saying is you're getting way more ukulele than the price, even in $20, $20 terms. So, if you're on the fence going, I don't know, I don't know too much about this Koa Kalani place, give them a try. Give them a chance um, and see what you think. Give them a, and by the way, if something goes wrong, contact them and let them know and see how they do with customer service. And like with all companies, if they give you good customer service, let us know. If you don't get good customer service, let everybody know too. I mean, that's how companies build a reputation. Give them the chance to stand behind their product if something should happen. So what I do is I rate ukuleles between zero, I always say one, but really between zero and five, because I have had to give a zero before. Zero and five ukuleles. This ukulele, it's a five. It's a five. Um, sound, playability, value, looks, it's off the charts. It's off the charts. An incredible bargain that also enables ukulele acquisition syndrome. So for example, um, if you don't have one of these, it's cheap enough that you can often add one to your collection without breaking the bank. Or if you buy one of these, it gives you still plenty of room to buy other ukuleles that you want to get. It's, it's a winner. So, koakalani.com, check them out. Just so impressed with this instrument and cannot wait to try different strings. Now, as I end this video, I have told you that I am going to be doing comparison in the future with my long neck Koaloha Opio. This one's a 2018 and the Koakalane down the road. Ultimately, this is a $450 instrument. It does come with a little nicer gig bag, but you know, that's where it's at. I think in a lot of ways, the finish on the Koaloha is a little nicer, just a touch. But the wood on the Koakalane um, is more attractive to me, just as a side note. But um, I'm looking forward to doing a review or a comparison between this one and this one. I haven't reviewed this one yet either. That'll be coming up before I do that. Now, I did also want to mention one other long neck that I have, which I've kind of alluded to. This is the Kala SSLNG, which I gave a five-star rating as well. I haven't given a lot of those. Uh, there's a lot of really decent ukuleles. This one, to me, um, in terms of sound and playability and looks, um, I really liked it. What I'm going to tell you is that if I had the choice between the Koa Kalani or the Kala, at this point, 
I would go with the complete solid acacia instrument. Unless you want that little brighter bark of the spruce. Ultimately, I think that's where I would go. But I'm comparing these with really amazing instruments. The koloha, any koloha, amazing instrument. And this is right in the same sentence as those. So watch for a future comparison with the koloha, uh, the opio long neck soprano with this. And I might even throw this one in as well as another long neck, just, just so you can hear the difference uh, when we get to that point. All right, so there it is. Um, I would not hesitate in one second to recommend or buy one of these myself. Many thanks again to Koa Kalani for sending me this to review and for the donation to one of my students. And I hope you're having a great day. I will be back soon some more uke stuff for you.